please subscribe. Click that little bell icon to be notified of upcoming videos. Support us on Patreon. Like us on Facebook and Instagram at Model Railroad Techniques. Please have a look at my new website, www.modelrailroadtechniques.com. Welcome back to MRT. In this video we are going to look at building this awesome wooden kit. I'll also step you through my experimentations in withering the kit. Let's get over to the workbench and let's get started. So the first thing I look at doing is after opening the package up. So this is the Danum Feeds uh, little shed made by Railroad Kits. I'll just place everything out on the workbench and sort of just try to visualise in my own mind uh, how I'm going to start putting this build together as per the instructions. So the next thing I look at doing is going through the kit methodically to make sure I have all the bits and pieces. So there are some little windows, they look like uh, titchy built windows. So we've got the, the window dressings there if you can see that. Just a thin piece of uh, plastic packaging type uh, material. So next we've got the the barn door assembly and, and door jam and the like. Now this thicker lumber here is all the lumber to do the bracing and there's some other small lumber to do the trim now i'm not actually going to use the roof that came with the kit so i'm going to use this rusty looking galvanized iron roof that i made up in another video i'll put that in the cards above how i did that so the next bit here i'm just uh, going to start removing all the the trim and all that for the roof so it's just obviously getting a very sharp exacto knife cutting off the little tags and methodically just working your way around the walls, uh, being careful, one, not to uh, break any of the very uh, fine details. So the next thing, once all the tr pieces of wall and all the various bits have been taken off all the sprues, so to speak, it's just a matter of getting a sanding stick, as I'm doing there, and just carefully sanding, uh, sanding them back. So that's just a little bit coarser ones. So obviously, you need to be very careful, one, to keep the sanding stick as square as you can to the edge, but obviously not to take too much away. But this kit had quite large um, little pieces of flashing on it, so it's just a matter of working your way through each of the walls and tidying up the best you can. So the next step you can see I've started to brace the walls. So what the instruction actually says, all the peaked sections are braced with the 1 8 square basswood provided. We brace the peak walls 1 8 out from the edge. So basically just like a quick indentation. So all the other walls have the, the bass or the 1 8 basswood uh, right up against it. Right up against the edge that is. And furthermore, I know the video there is not actually showing me doing the correct uh, bracing. However, I've wanted to just clear that up with the instructions. So it's just a matter of grabbing some sort of cutting tool to cut it. Um, I also a big proponent of probably going overboard with the bracing because once you start adding all your washers and all that, you can you'll find that the uh, the clapboard will start warping. So it's either that or you can, as I'll show you later. Um, you can do washers on both sides of the, the structure wall, um, which sort of cancels uh, the warping out. So just as I mentioned, warping can be a really big issue when you're building these kits. So on a piece that I'm working on there, I probably will brace that in three positions on each edge and obviously through the middle. Now, it's also very important to get a good coverage of glue right across that basswood so we get a nice, even stick stick all the way along so you can see i just use uh, i use a tacky pva glue spread it out with uh, a fine the, the fine tip of the cocktail stick the next important step after gluing all the basswood strips on is obviously getting them nice and dry so you can see i'm applying some little pegs here this is just a bit more of an experimentation it did actually work quite well but a lot of the guys and girls out there use some sort of counterweight or a weight that they put on top of it that uh, weighs it down so either or uh, that worked well for me but I'll probably try next time for some sort of weight I could see these pegs are only good for a little structure like this but um, yeah I'll let you work out your best way forward I just wanted to show you one of the peaks how I do it so the peaks I can see that will warp quite a bit so what I'm looking at doing you can see I'm just sizing up a piece of wood there so what I'm going to do I'm just going to cut that so it just sits in that little peak that just above that window there so uh, you probably agree yes I'll probably do over overboard a little bit but uh, all the research I've done so far on these these kits they say it's better to put too much bracing than not enough. I 
Okay, so the next thing we need to look at doing is start adding the, the wash to the to the wood. So the, the colours I'm using are Americana uh, Burnt Umber. And the next one is Vallejo, which is a grey colour. And the last but not least, Americana, just a, a, an ebony black colour. So that's just all mixed together in the palette there, as you can see, comes up as a, a muddy looking color. So at this point in time, it's just a matter of adding it all over the model. Now, it does look a little bit dark at this point in time. That's purely because of the, more of the water content. So once it dries out, it, you will find that it uh, does tone down a fair bit. Now, you can see I'm using, I'm applying it the paintbrush along the clapboard. So I just find, the experimenting I've been doing so far when you're adding that initial wash it just uh, has better coverage. So you're probably asking what proportion of each of those colors that I use. Now I don't really go into exactly the exact proportions of it but it's just a reasonable splodge of of the uh, burn umber and grade it down just a little just a few drops of the Vallejo gray and maybe one of the black so each one of my structures I plan on building like this will all be different so the, the testing I have been doing is the uh, meaning I don't really uh, follow any given recipe as such now you can probably see there I'm just using the the, the hairdryer to to dry it off a little bit quicker now you can see as the the water content comes out of uh, the acrylic paint that uh, that starts to tone down uh, quite nicely so at this point it's just a matter of methodically going through the rest of the model um, and going through it all like that. So you can see that little bit there was a little bit dark so it's just a matter of getting a bit of that paint off the brush now. As I sort of suggested before, this is the colouring I'm using for this model and probably every other model after this is going to be totally different, So, which I think is probably the key to it. So this video is not so much a, a video on the exact colorings and how to get it right it's just a matter of having a look in at buildings in the real world and try to replicate it the best you can and mix colors around on your on your palette and it's a really um, good exercise building one of these these kits i've found in sort of getting to know your new paints so my new paints that i'm using is americana type paints been using vallejo a little bit of late um, mainly in the airbrush but um, they are obviously getting, for me, getting a little bit expensive, so the Americana, I'll be giving it a try uh, after being, seeing it being used on uh, various other modelling channels uh, that are getting around. So at this point I'm looking at these models and I just think they're a little bit too brown for my liking, so I'm just going to add a sort of a light grey sort of wash over the top of that so I've got a, a Tamir paint there so it's just a matter of making a, a, a lot thinner wash and then just adding that as you did before and just grading those uh, those colors up because I found the, the experimenting I've done so far the more layers you do and the, the, the more subtle the gradation the, the better effect so as I place this out in the palette I've also added a little bit of a, a black color just to make it just a little bit darker and then it's just a matter of adding it to all your walls So at this point, um, my purpose of building this structure is to make it as weathered as I can I can get it. So what I'm going to do here, I learnt, or well, not learnt, I learnt a little technique from a chap online called Jason Jensen. Now he just grabs a, a razor blade as I've got there, and what he does, he slides it under the clapboard there, and then just lifts up the board. So what that uh, represents is quite um, significant wearing within the board. So you do scrape away some of the paint that, uh, or some of the wash that you've put on, but uh, as you'll see coming up, that I just uh, go back in with a, a dark colour on the brush and and tidy that up. So it's quite a, a, a nice little effect. Okay, so there's the effect I'm trying to achieve there. It's a bit hard to get it up there on the camera, but however, it uh, just raises the boards out and adds that uh, next level of wearing. So um, it's up to you whether you want to actually do it at all or how much you want to do it. So I just sort of work methodically through and do a half a dozen or so per panel and I sort of leave it at that. So at this point, it's uh, we start tidying up. You can see there the little dents it makes when you 
lift the the clapboard so it's just a matter of going back in with a some sort of wash or some sort of other color um, and touching up those little spots obviously we'll work more on those later when we get into the weathering chalks So at this point what I want to do, I've sort of done the underwash that just a little bit dark on my point. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do another overwash. So that's sort of like a light green fillet from Vallejo and a, a white colour and a dark green there from Vallejo also. So I'm going to just mix those together and try to do a bit of a, a peeled sort of paint effect. So I've just washed it right down. I'm just going to just, just touch it almost like just a almost like a, a dry brushing but just a little bit wetter brush on it to sort of uh, come up with the, the effect that the, the shed or the barn was initially sort of that, that greenish colour um, and the paint is just coming through of the wood underneath. So as I said, a bit of an experimentation but I uh, thought I'd give it a go. So as you can see, I'm just sort of wisping the brush through just a little bit of brush, uh, sorry, a little bit of paint on the brush and you can see I'm sort of going horizontally across with the grain of the, the clapboard. See the uh, that green come through on that clapboard on the finished product there on that back wall near the window. So I, in experimentation, yeah, good to try. Um, however, I probably would possibly do things a little bit differently next time with it. I've since uh, purchased some cracking type paint um, paint effects that I might give it a go to give that similar type effect. Um, but for a first time, I'm, I'm quite happy with that. So at this point in time, that's the end of episode number one. So in the next episode, we will go through painting up the windows and the doors and doing the signs and starting to do the weathering. So thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Make sure you subscribe. Click that little bell icon to be notified of upcoming videos. Support us on Patreon. Like us on Facebook and Instagram at Model Railroad Techniques. Please have a look at my new website, www.modelrailroadtechniques.com.